Hey, it's Liz. In today's video, as you saw in the title, is going to be kind of like a story time about a situation that I had that I very much feel karma was a part of. The experience that happened, I lived in like alternative student housing. Um, it was a frat house and I stayed in a room with two other girls, so we had a triple, and it was for one of my years while at Berkeley. And because it was like a massive house, everyone was able to bring over friends and things like that and have visitors. And so um, there was one girl that lived down the street who was friends of the brothers, and because we were like the three girls that lived there, she ended up befriending um, us as well. Or what I should say is she befriended my two roommates, but not me. So this was years ago, and since then I have no idea why this occurred, but she was pretty much one of my college main girls. I've thought about what I could have potentially done, how I could have potentially triggered all of this. I don't know. All I know is that there was this girl, she came over all the time, and she was super nice to my roommates, but never to me. And... What I mean by that is when in the same groups or because there would be different gatherings and everything at the house and the times that I would participate, I'd go out, obviously she'd be there and she'd be hanging out with my roommates or with some of the brothers and whenever I would join a group and then she would be a part of it, every time I would say something, it's like she would ignore what I was saying and carry on with the conversation as if I didn't say a single thing. And then like aside from that too, because she befriended my roommates, honestly it got kind of hard to be able to hang out with with them when she was around I felt very much like I was being ousted from the group or that like I wasn't really allowed to hang out with them it was really weird I don't know why that occurred oh I forgot to mention we're gonna call my mean girl Katie space for this video that's not her name but I mean like this is completely my experience and so like this isn't for any malice against her it's just more of my observations from the situation. And so anyways, one of the biggest things that happened that kind of blew my mind about just all of this is the fact that over winter break, I ended up leaving after my last final was completed. I left that very night and everyone in the house was throwing a winter break party. And so um, I chose to skip on that. I wanted to be able to return home be able to see my family. So then after returning after winter break, I've had a couple interactions with Katie and they've been the exact same, still unresponsive, unwelcoming, and just kind of being really rude and mean. And so at this point, one of my roommates ends up saying like, hey, I need to talk to you. I have something I need to tell you. So then like we sit down and she's just explaining how it's like, yeah, so you know that night that you left for winter break? And I was like, yeah you guys had the party it sounded like you guys had fun she's like yeah we did well katie ended up coming over and she ended up drinking a lot and essentially long story short this girl katie got drunk and then she chose to crash in my bed and it's just kind of like hold on a second like okay i get that like I don't know what potentially could have happened, but it's like, you're going to be mean to me for the first semester that I'm living in this place. And then over winter break, you're going to sleep in my bed. And then after winter break, you're going to continue treating me like shit? Like, what? And you're not going to mention anything about the fact that like you used my bed. I don't know, that, I think that was a thing that did it for me of just like, okay, I don't know what I could have potentially done, but whatever I did, it's not just like something I could have done and something that could have been misunderstood. No, it just seems like she's kind of making the rules for herself and how she chooses to interact with everyone. And unfortunately, she didn't want to interact with me in a good way. So that was kind of ridiculous. And honestly, like I'm not angry about it. I was hurt at the time, but I know everyone has their reasons for doing different things. So I don't hold it against her. But being real, it was kind of mean. So I, I don't know. Anyways. I don't know. You work on getting over the hurt and everything, but some things you just don't forget. Anyways, this all happens in my junior year, and so for my senior year, I ended up getting a private room at another, uh, like a boarding house. Yeah, I think that's what you would call it. I don't know, they rented rooms. So anyways, for my senior year, I moved out of the house. I found um, housing somewhere else that was uh, cheaper. So ended up staying there and then graduated and didn't see her again. And then flash forward two years later and I got a job working um, at a company 
based in the financial district in San Francisco. It was actually a remote office for uh, a company that's headquarters in New York. And so they were working on building the team in San Francisco. And so I was hired on when there were a couple people, not too many, so got hired on and then started working. And after a couple months of being there, they were still working on building and trying to find more people to bring onto the team. And so my supervisor uh, was the one overseeing the San Francisco team. Well, her manager from New York ended up coming out. And so they were getting interviews set up over the course of a week. So anyways, one of those days, my supervisor and her manager start sifting through all the resumes for the interviews that they have coming up that day. And then I hear them make a comment of space. What kind of last name is space? And then I just like immediately my heart like stopped and then like started beating really fast. I started sweating and like just kind of started freaking out because I do not like confrontation. I believe that things happen for a reason and it's like people like do you. Like if you wanna do things in a certain way then that's perfectly fine. But like if what you choose to do hurts me, I, I feel no part in being a part of it. I will let you do that, but separate from you in order to like not be in a toxic situation. So anyways, what ends up happening is they're joking about this and then like I stop because they're sitting right by my desk and I'm like, you mean like, is that, is her first name Katie? And they're like, yeah. And then I was like, did she go to UC Berkeley? And then they like look through her resume that's attached to the application and they're like, yeah, oh my God, do you know her? And so then like, Obviously, there are a couple thoughts I have going on in my head. One, I'm internally screaming because I want to run away forever and ever. Two, I'm thinking how it's like, I want to lie because like, I, I don't want to have any association. I don't want to talk about it. But then three, I also feel like I want to say something so then that way I don't have to see her and I could potentially get up before she ends up coming in for her interview, right? So I, I think about it, I'm, I'm kind of quiet and then they're just kind of like, hey, well, like, can you, do you know her? And I'm just kind of like, yes, I do. Uh, we crossed paths while we were at Berkeley. So then that's where they started asking like, oh, okay, well, what do you think of her? And I let them know that it's like, I don't know if like, I really want to be like, a reference or anything like that and then they they kept pushing very nicely though and essentially just saying like yeah like we're asking for real references my supervisor could tell like yeah like maybe it's not going to be the best reference and so she's like yeah like this is a safe space it's a personal reference because we trust you we know what your work ethic is we want to know if she would be a good worker and if she would be a good fit for the team she was essentially saying like we want people to help create a safe environment for the team. So if there's any experiences that you have that could potentially apply to how she works with others, that would be great. And so I tried to keep it as neutral as possible in terms of sharing things. I shared how she was never very welcoming of me and I never found out why and how she had used things of my possession and then still afterwards never spoke with me. So yeah, pretty much I, I just shared that it's like she wasn't someone I would want to associate with on a daily basis. And I did also say that like if she is a great worker then by all means please hire her because I cannot speak to her work ethic or like what she's professionally capable of and if she can handle the workload and the pace that we have to work at. So I did say like, give her a chance if she hits everything else off on the checklist, but my supervisor did mention like, no, we're focusing on teamwork. She was very big on, you know, like if you're in, an, in a very like hard environment for work, I don't know if some of you have lived in that kind of situation of doing very long hours and literally not really being treated as a person and just being seen as a paper pusher in order to make clients happy. Her biggest thing was focusing on building a team that could support each other. And so I kind of got the sense that she had already made her decision. I felt kind of bad, but at the same time, I felt kind of, yeah, like people always talk about how life is unfair and everything. And I just feel like I've always believed in karma and I've always felt that like, you know, what you put out is what you get back in. And I believe that it's not just in like the words that you use or like the energies that you send from your body, but also through the interactions that you have with others. I very much believe that like, how you interact with others, the energy that you give them will then determine how they choose to interact with you. Within the next couple hours, she ended up coming in for her interview. I was at my desk, but I kind of like just like did a little like hunch down and like 
try to stay out of the way. They had the interview and then she left and I know my supervisor ended up coming over right afterwards and she's like, hey, are you okay? Like we just walked her out. And I was just like, yeah, like I'm fine. After a couple days, I ended up asking if they found anyone to hire and they said yes. And my supervisor though did follow it up with saying that Katie was not one of them. And yeah, I'm not gonna lie, my younger self, I felt very like vindicated. I felt very, I felt very vindicated. I felt like this is like the best form of like, karma is a bitch. You made your bed and now you're sleeping in it kind of situation. And I know it, like people could say that like, oh, I could have like said that she was a great person and everything else, but it's like, that would have been a lie. Based on my experience with her, that would have been a direct lie of how she chose to interact with me. Yeah, it was just one of those feelings of like, this is why you always choose to interact with others and give them love and support at all times because it's not just for you, it's for others. It was a, an interesting experience to be able to be on the outside of that and be able to see how that worked out.